welcome back. As you all know that Rachi Mall is celebrating Flow Week. Uh, and today is a very important day for Rachi Mall because our guest today is one of the most esteemed person in the blockchain industry. We are honorable to let announce that we are joined by today none other than Joseph Fizela, founder of Flow Blockchain. Now, I would start this conversation with a story. Let's say your windows crashed. Please, sir. And you go to a forum or some support, Microsoft support, and you write, this happened, this something wrong happened with my system. What should I do? And Bill Gates replied to you, look, guy, do this, do that. It's OK. We are, we are, uh, we'll help you. We will fix the problem. But that doesn't happen, right? Joseph Fisela is a guy, owner, really? admin of Flow Blockchain. I got it. A humble person, a brilliant mind, yet cares about each and every person in the Flow community. As a developer, when you you just put your problem in the community. It's most probably that uh, Joe will be the person replying to you. And let me remind you again, yeah. Joe is not just another guy in Flow community. He is the admin. He is the owner of the Flow blockchain. He is the co-founder of Alexandria.io. So very soon, uh, I'm waiting for my teammates to add Joseph Fisela on the network. And we shall be having his experience so far in this world of blockchain. And we will be privileged to learn his journey, his struggles, his ambitions, and his future plans. Everything on this uh, live talk today on Rachi Mall. Thank you. So, guys. Joe is on the stream. Yes. So we are waiting for Joe. Uh, our yeah. team, Vivek, is trying to add him to the network. And we shall be ready soon. my audio I think we have some technical issue to be fixed before making Joe on the call we need to figure it out Yes. Yes. Approve. Yes. So I guess Joe is connected with us now and in Yeah, he's getting out. But how will we hear you? Hey. Yes. Hi. Joe is here. How's it Hi, going? Uh, I'm fine. How about you? Great. Thanks for inviting me. It's our privilege, sir. Uh, I'm honored to uh, let you know that Rachi Mall is celebrating Flow Week uh, this week, and we are promoting our ICO as well as Flow to the local community here, so that the developers, and especially uh, to our local community, the developer society, uh, can learn and understand about the Flow, how easy it is to build applications on Flow blockchain, to learn more about you and your uh, humble personality, Super supportive, you know, you've always been a support for each and every developer there. And the intention of the Rachi Mall is to build a community so that they can learn blockchain, they can lo learn flow blockchain and build mm -hmm. applications on top of that. And we are doing everything that we can do for it. Great. That's awesome. And I did read a little bit about it on your Facebook page. Um, that's really cool. 
Uh, I, you know, as you know, I've been helping people learn blockchain technology for about five years. Uh, and before that, uh, I actually got started in tech at a computer camp as a child. So in, in the summers, I would go and, and learn computer programming. And even there, uh, I became a teacher and I was able to teach people how to use C++, how to use Photoshop, and how to basically use the computer to you know, change the things that were happening on the screen in every way possible. So that's something that I started doing you know, as, a, as a kid. Um, and now, you know, now that I have a professional career in blockchain and Bitcoin technology, uh, I've continued to do that and I've continued to help people learn. And I, I think that that's something that I've been passionate about my whole life. And I'm, I'm glad to help people do that uh, still. Uh, so now I see. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm joined by, from the tech side, uh, Will, I'm joined by Vivek. Hey, Joe. What's hey, up? Vivek, how's it going? Good to see I'm you. Good, I'm good. I'm good. Yep. Finally. <laughs> we have been yeah. talking on Telegram, but then finally we are able to see each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we also have uh, Raja. Our, uh, from the business side of the Rachi Mall, uh, we are joined by Raja. Raja, can you come? Hey, Hi, Raja. Hey, Raja. Nice to meet you. How's it going? I think we can do so, uh, focus it's, it's all good. It's so all good. Be Great. Great. So, you cool. know. You know, uh, the best, best, best thing first, you know, as we speak, uh, even the, as latest as, uh, you know, last night, at least 50 people, you know, must be actually learning about flow, learning about, you know, how to utilize all the developers, all, all programmers, budding programmers. Who want That's to incredible. Make their oh, by the way, Raja is the head for uh, all the interns who are working on flow. Like he's the one who manages them. Oh, very cool. Very cool. <laughs> We have, uh, uh, we have uh, like, uh, you know, so some few hundreds actually at least uh, must have, you know, whoever touch is touch base with us, will always put them on first and learn flow, <laughs> <laughs> install flow. <laughs> That's, That's the first, first step. step. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very cool. It's, it's always like that. So Joe, uh, this interview is more, uh, more or less for the developers of the our, uh, you know, our section of our influence and mm -hmm. uh, intention is to tell them that, you know, first is what is blockchain and then there is a flow blockchain that is, that makes it super easy, right, to build applications on top of it, to train yeah. them and so I would like to, uh, for them, for our uh, interns, I would like you to share your, your experience, your first day that I want to become a blockchain developer from the first day and what were your struggles? How did you start it? What was your vision and everything uh, you could share with us? For this. Sure. So I learned about Bitcoin in 2009 when it first came out. Uh, one of my friends from college printed out the white paper, the Satoshi paper, that, the nine page description of Bitcoin. Uh, and we both read through it, but being, you know, basically a first year comp size student in college, I didn't really understand what it meant or what was going on. So I tried and I downloaded the program on my laptop and I started mining. Um, I didn't know what was going on. My computer got really hot. You know, it started, you know, the fans started going really fast. I wasn't really sure what was happening. Um, so I just turned it off and forgot about it. And I don't know like where the hard drive is. I don't know if I mined any Bitcoins or like if I have any at all. Um, if I, you know, if I even had any like blocks that I found, but, uh, because I didn't know what was going on. It was very confusing. And, you know, that's fundamentally this, this is a new paradigm. It's like a new thing. It's a new technology. It's going to be hard to understand for people that first get into it, especially when it first comes out. So I forgot about it. And then three years later in 2012, uh, one of my friends mentioned it and he was said, Joey, like I heard about Bitcoin on the news. Didn't you do this if, like for a little while in college? And I said, oh, yeah, but, you know, it didn't really work out. Uh, I, I don't really know a lot about it. And he said, you got to check it out. Like, it's become really big. And I looked at an article and I saw that people were still mining. And I said, oh, my God, like, I need to look into this. And then I learned that there were new coins. There was Litecoin. You know, people were doing different things with the blockchain technology, changing the blockchain, changing the protocol, changing the code. And I just, I got sucked in, man. Like, I, 
that I was at that time I had my first job out of college and I was making web pages for a company in the financial district in New York City. And it was like really easy job, like super laid back. Everyone was really cool and it was a fun place to work. But once I learned again that Bitcoin like had been continuing to grow for that those three years, uh, I really got interested in, in, you know, that aspect of the technology again. And I totally quit my job to like do my own thing. <laughs> and what that ended up being was mining. So uh, it happens to be that my, my father had a house that had solar panels on it. And I was able to mine with uh, like solar electricity, basically. So we set up like two or three mining rigs. Yeah, like in the basement, you know, and uh, I was essentially generating light coins with solar energy. It was very cool. Uh, So it was like totally (laughs) eco friendly and everything. Um, And what I was doing was speculative mining. So I would look on the forum and I would learn from people on the forum and see which new technologies were coming out and which ones I believed in. And then I would mine them and see what was happening. But also I would go on and see if they needed any tech help. So if they needed a website or whatever, they would pay me like 500 whatever coin, you know, and most of those coins nowadays don't even exist anymore. But um, so I was like learning the ecosystem. I was really learning like what was going on in the Bitcoin sphere. Uh, And then I saw one coin and it was called Flow. And I said, hmm, this is really interesting. So I checked it out and it was created by, uh, you know, the forum name of the guy is Sky Angel. Uh, No one really knows who he is. He's kind of like Satoshi, like he's very anonymous. Uh, but I saw that he created this coin with the extra data field to build apps. And now it's like, you know, everyone's building apps on Ethereum and whatever. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're b- branching off in many different directions. Uh, but in 2013, which is, you know, by that time it was 2013, just about June, uh, that wasn't really something anyone was doing. So I was like, this is what I want to do. You know, I want to build like extra apps on top of the blockchain. And at that point, people that were into Bitcoin were sort of like not into building uh, apps on the blockchain. In fact, if you built an app on the blockchain, they would sort of like not let you get your transactions mined in the pool. So <laughs> like people that were building apps on Bitcoin were not, uh, you know, they weren't friendly with the people that were mining Bitcoin and developing Bitcoin. Uh, and it actually took a really long time for Bitcoin to add that data field, the 40 byte data field. And it's not even enough. You, you can barely put a protocol message in there. So Flow was really the way to go, uh, and it was the first coin to have that messaging field in the blockchain and to allow you to use that extra storage space in the blockchain. Um, the only other coin that was like it was Namecoin. Namecoin was the first altcoin, actually, and it had uh, a little bit of extra data, but it was mostly um, it was for uh, registering a domain name in a blockchain. So it was like a very specific purpose, whereas Flow was, you know, let's put any data you want. It doesn't have to be a domain name. It doesn't have to be like a registration for anything. Uh, you just can do build whatever system you want, right? So that's how I became interested in it. So I started mining Flow. I, you know, pointed all my miners at it. Uh, and then I was like, I need to learn really how, like, how is this different? How fundamentally did SkyAngel create a blockchain that was separate from the Bitcoin blockchain? And I wanted to learn more. So I built a block explorer, and the first block explorer I built was like totally PHP JavaScript based. Uh, And I actually, I got to a point where I would be able to take that block explorer and apply it to a new coin, just change a few variables and change the style. Uh, And I got like a few bounties for applying it to new coins that would come out. Uh, So I learned how like all these different coins worked and I was able to see more clearly what was going on back like in the back end. Uh, so through the Block Explorer, I really learned a lot about the blockchain. Uh, and actually, there's one other coin that still uses my Block Explorer now. And that was in like late 2013. So it's almost five years now uh, that, that that software was written. So not my best software. You know, I wrote it. Re- I was really young. <laughs> um, but it still works. So, yeah. Five then, years is a long time. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been quite a while. Um, but yeah, so that, that Block Explorer was really cool. And it really... It really showed me what was going on. Like I learned about transaction inputs, transaction outputs. Actually, that block explorer saved me a, a big headache because there was a flow pool that was, this is a very little known thing about Bitcoin, but okay, you guys know how there's like a, uh, a subsidy reward. Every Bitcoin that you mine is 12.5 Bitcoins, right? Uh, in the block. So yeah. the actual rule in the code says, as long as it's less than the subsidy, it's a valid block. So if a miner wants to pay himself 10 coins, he can do that. And the other 2.5 coins just never exist. Because the actual code says, you, as long as you don't exceed 12.5 or whatever it is at the time, it's a valid block. 
So like a miner can mine himself a zero coin block. He would never do that, but it is technically valid. What happened on Flow is one of the guys that set up a mining pool, uh, every once in a while, like every hundred blocks or so, uh, he would mine one coin instead of a hundred coins. And I was something like 50% of the hash rate on that pool, right? So like I would get 50 coins, 50 coins, and then sometimes I would get like 0.4 or 0.49. And I was like, I don't know what's going on here. And I, for a while, I just was like, oh, it's dust transaction. I didn't really know what that meant, right? So I was just like, it's a dust transaction. Cool. What ended up happening was <laughs> that, my, that miner had a mistake in his code. And I saw on the block explorer, like it said very clearly, Coinbase reward, one flow. And I'm like, oh my God, how did this happen? It's supposed to be 100. And then I looked in the code and it said, you know, as long as it's, you know, less than 100, it's fine. And I was like, oh my God. So he's been mistakenly paying out people from his pool. And like, we brought it up to him and he just like kind of disappeared. <laughs> so I think he was embarrassed. Like no, he didn't get the coins. No one got the coins. They're, they're effectively burned coins, right? Um, yeah, so that, that was something that actually I, I was able to learn through making this block explorer was how that code worked and like the little in intricacies of how the blockchain works. Uh, just, you know, there are a lot of implications there. Uh, so you, you have to be sure to implement things the correct way. So yeah, I learned about inputs to transactions, outputs to, tr to transactions, uh, how everything is encoded in hex and you know, how it's sent around the network and things like that. Um, and yeah, that's, that was like a really cool experience for me. And I just, I started a Bitcoin company with a friend of mine to accept Bitcoin for like shops around New York City. Uh, we did that for a little while. I started another company that was like flow app based. But at that time, honestly, people didn't want to hear about uh, apps on top of a blockchain. They were like, oh, it's Bitcoin or nothing. Like, get out of here. So every time I talked about it, I would get some like, weird looks. Obviously, nowadays, everyone's building a blockchain app. But, uh, you know, so it was like a little bit too early. Uh, but it's cool because I had that experience and we've done stuff like this. Uh, and then in 2014, I found out about Alexandria from actually an Ethereum Skype group, I saw Devin Reed, who's the founder of Alexandria, uh, talking about how he wanted to decentralize uh, media. And Ethereum wasn't out at the time. So, you know, Flow predates Ethereum, and we've been working on these apps for a while. So Alexandria became really interesting to me, and I, I uh, met Devin Reed, and we went to San Diego, and we started building what is now Alexandria.io. And that's an app where you can, pretty much using the data field in Florin Coin, put uh, a hash of a video file or any media file, and it'll find it in IPFS and download it. So you have essentially a peer-to-peer, -peer, fully decentralized network for sharing files. Uh, and that's what Alexandria is. So yeah, that's basically my intro to how I got started in blockchain and, and how I learned about it and what I've been doing since then. Um, and it's, it's been really fun. Uh, it's been really, really great. Amazing. Alexandria is a really interesting project, actually. Like, right. I saw Imogen heaps uh, files on the library. Like, did she release her songs over there? Oh, yeah. Uh, she came into Slack and talked with us and, and yeah. uh, let us use her files. And she was really interested. She was one of the early adopters of blockchain for, for media. Um, so, yeah, she let us use it and give it away for free. And people are able to download it on our, on our uh, system. It's, it's really cool. So we, what oh, we want to do is, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was really great because I love some of her work uh, and I, I've been a fan for a really long time. So that was like really awesome for me personally to, to like kind of meet her and talk with her. I didn't meet her in person, but like she came in Slack and, you know, talked to us and like was like very interested in it way before anyone was interested. That must have been like 2016 or something. So yeah, yeah that was, that. yeah, that like, was yeah, really, really fun. Yeah. <laughs> the coolest part of, you know, flow blockchain, I think about is that like there are blockchains that offer you the platform to build up uh, applications, but flow is one blockchain that offers you this uh, to build applications, but with robustness, security and everything. So uh, would you like exactly. to talk about the applications that so far the flow community has built and like yeah, the, flow trizer, yeah, yeah, the applications like Alexandria, Flowtrizer, and what are your future products? Would you like to talk about them? Sure, I'd love to. Uh, so actually the first Flow blockchain app was a Valentine's Day app where you can write like a love note to someone in the blockchain. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore because uh, I started the company with someone else uh, and he didn't, you know, he went another direction. He's actually started a blockchain IoT company, which is awesome. Um, 
So that app was sort of like, you know, declare your infinite love and the blockchain is forever. And that was like one of the ideas that we had. Uh, it was cool. And actually, the, you know, because the blockchain is still around, you could go through all the flow transactions and find it. Uh, you would find those messages. And anyone that sent each other like a note, if they have that little email, there's like a PDF file, they can still find those transactions, which is pretty cool. So it still works uh, if they just go to the block explorer. Um, but yeah, that was the first application. And then there was Alexandria, which you know, we just went over. Uh, Alexandria is really cool because we're actually releasing a new update soon where we're going to have a new front end and you know, new file type stuff. And everything is going to be totally revamped. So like, it's going to be much easier for people to use. Uh, one of the biggest problems with blockchain technology is how difficult it is to explain to people what's going on and how difficult it is, like the UX, the UI. Uh, it's so hard, even in the wallets. Uh, and I've noticed that some of the newer wallets are, are even worse. You know, uh, they just skip a lot of steps. It's very confusing for users. Uh, and they don't answer the basic questions. And that, that stuff gets really tough. So what we want to do is uh, even simplify Alexandria more than it is now, just to make it super easy for people to understand how to use it. And then, you know, they can start uploading and, and trying it out. And they can, you know, first they can pay with dollars or whatever, uh, credit card. Um, eventually, you know, they'll pay with Flow or they'll pay with Litecoin or they'll pay with Bitcoin or they'll get paid in those currencies. Then, then, they, then they can understand it a little bit more. Uh, so that's, that's really the idea. And what's really cool is... Um, you know, there's a lot of companies that are thinking about accepting Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies now. You know, Coinbase came out with their, their shopping cart app, and uh, that's a huge competitor to Shopify. It's really awesome. Uh, eBay is talking about accepting Bitcoin. So instead of, like, buying, you know, selling your stuff on Alexandria and then selling the Bitcoin for dollars and then, you know, buying stuff on eBay, you just get paid straight through Alexandria from your fans and then you take that Bitcoin or Flow or whatever it is and buy it on another and buy whatever you want on another site. You know, I think that in the future, we're going to see a lot of people implementing crypto shopping carts. So we want to be part of that ecosystem from the from the get go. And uh, we're, 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 well, we're well positioned to do that. Um, so after Alexandria, uh, we there was a miner named Davi Ortega, and he joined our community and started mining with his ASIC uh, on Florin coin. And he accumulated some flow and started learning about it and was like, he probably, I don't actually know how he, he learned about it. Maybe through one of the coin calculation sites that, you know, tells you which one to mine now. Um, but eventually he started learning about it more and he is self-proclaimed not a coder, right? He's a scientist and he knows a little bit of Python enough to get an app done. Uh, and he was able to make two flow apps really quickly. The first one was called Floaterizer and Floaterizer is sort of a notary app. And it lets you put in a document and it takes the SHA-512 hash, puts that hash in the blockchain, gives you a PDF. And now you have a proof that that data existed at that time. Uh, so that was really cool. And that's like perfect use case for something like Flow, where you have that short amount of data, that good, you know, good amount of data in the blockchain. And then you take a timestamp from the blockchain, which also is verified. And you have something that you can prove was existent at a certain time. And that's really awesome. He's... Storing real world contracts too, right? Exactly. Yeah. Anything you want. And he's also working on a new update for the UI for that as well. Because right now it's really limited to just uploading files. He wants you to be able to verify files. He wants you to be able to have the option of hosting the file uh, and everything like that. He can make it into a real business if he wanted to overnight. So that's, you know, that right now it's just like a cool app. Uh, it could be something that a lot of people use in the future. Um, and then we have uh, sharedsecret.net. And that's another Davi Ortega uh, creation. And if you guys have heard of Shamir's secret sharing, that's sort of like multi-sig where you have an N of, N of M uh, uh, system where you might need like two or three out of five uh, people to sign a <laughs> transaction. Instead of that, you have an encrypted message. And that encrypted message requires N of M uh, keys to come together. So instead of having one key to encrypt something and then you can decrypt with that key, or having an asymmetric sort of encryption method. Uh, what you have instead is this N of M method where you can say like, okay, you need 100 of these keys to decrypt this file out of 200 keys. And then like you can give, you know, 25 to the CEO and then 10 to each officer and then one to each other employee. So, you know, as long as there are some people that are available, they can take it out. Uh, or, you know, for your own purposes, you might be able to take uh, like a Bitcoin private key or something like that, or a Flow private key, 
and put it through this system and then you have it encrypted and like put one at your family's house and one at work and one in the bank, you know, and then you need two out of three to be able to get it. So that could be one way to secure your files. Uh, so that's something that actually happens on the Flow blockchain right now. You can encrypt anything you want. It goes into the blockchain uh, and then you get those files that downloads all of them as a PDF. You just click the button, it goes, whoop. you know, if you, if you choose like 10, it just downloads 10 files like all, all at once. Uh, and then you can split them up and give them to other people. So it's really, really cool. Uh, there's one more app that's, that's live right now called Tokenly. And Tokenly is sort of like a shopping cart on the blockchain. Uh, this is created by Adam B. Levine, and he is one of the original creators of the first Bitcoin podcast called Let's Talk Bitcoin. Uh, he's a great guy. He's been in the community for a really long time, and he's doing a lot on the blockchain. Part of his project is also doing music sharing. So it's not like Alexandria where you have like a YouTube sort of site. It's more like uh, back in the day, you used to give someone a CD, you know, and like you could borrow their CD and play it and like you could swap CDs and stuff. So what he's trying to do is make it so that people have music rights on the blockchain and you can trade that right for the music for another one. So you and I can swap. If I bought some rap music and you bought some classical music, we can swap, you know, um, and he's trying to do that on the blockchain. So that's a cool idea. And he's using Flow uh, to do that as well. So those are the apps that exist right now. We're talking about getting a few more added. Uh, there's some stuff that's being worked on. Oh, yeah, and you guys, actually, tell me what you guys are doing on the blockchain, because I time ago you had written some, some contracts in the blockchain and done the initial stuff, right? But I actually, I haven't kept up with it. Yes, I was coming to that. Uh, and I would promise you yeah. that those, uh, those uh, projects that you talked about are the coolest one, but those are not the only one uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. available. So uh, we guys are doing something as well, and I would like to invite Vivek and Raja to, you know, talk on the tech side of what we are, how we are utilizing the Flow blockchain, and Raja to talk about the business side of it. Vivek. So right cool. now, uh, uh, we are uh, using the Flow blockchain to float our own tokens. So uh, yesterday night we recorded a video on how to do that, and we'll post the whole uh, with the screenshots and with the Flow wallet how to do that, and we, we'll we'll post that like probably in the evening, today, yeah. today evening. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So. Yeah, that's one of the things. Then, uh, like, we really need an Electrum uh, wallet because, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> because like normal people, like normal people and people who are not techies, they yeah. wouldn't want to download the whole blockchain and then. Yeah, it is. It does take quite of, a while. So that so that that's again something we are working on right now. I think okay. the, the Electrum thing got sorted because of uh, Bitspill. Bitspill did the did the integration over there. I'm not sure if he's completely done with it, but I do know that they're almost done with SegWit, and the SegWit upgrade is, is something that's sort of needed for Electrum. So uh, we'll see. That's his next project, <laughs> I think. Uh, this awesome. feels great. He's, he's been such a great help for so long. Uh, he and Ray are working on SegWit right now. So if, uh, yeah, if we need to put some, some resources towards getting Electrum done, I can get Bitspill and Ray to work on it, no problem. That'll be amazing. So, like, we are basically thinking, like, once I... Uh, to develop a wallet where you can tokenize any asset you want, any real world asset. Cool. And uh, you don't want uh, to make it very difficult. So people would just have to enter the format of the comment, which would mm -hmm. represent that asset. And then uh, the transfer would stay, uh, take place automatically. Cool. That's great. Basically, new concept. Uh, totally. A uh, totally new concept, uh, something with real world assets, mixing the virtual, we are creating new virtual assets on the real life physical assets. How we are doing, say, for example, right now we are in Bali, Indonesia. And uh, yeah, I was have... going to ask about that. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys are on vacation. So, or... By the way, we, we want to invite you, you know, so this there is a here, Slow <laughs> Villa. And, uh, you know, it's a, uh, this uh, resort is renamed as the blockchain, uh, Ranchimal blockchain, uh, you know, resort. That's so and, cool. Uh, we, have, we have a flow villa exclusively, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, where three, uh, three different uh, rooms are there, you know, so it's a very, very beautiful, uh, well done. Wow. So actually, we'll send you the promotional video of uh, what we are doing uh, in a day or two, I guess. Yeah. Uh, cool. So, you see, we have a lot of very interesting things, uh, you know, to share to the world. That is, uh, we are looking at 
how you know consumption see in any consumption say for example if someone is uh, spending money and uh, you know he is uh, getting access to a service like say for example a research mm mm-hmm. so he is actually gaining the room night now there is a here is a, actually losing side the spender always in the losing side and the uh, research owner is always on the gaining side mm mm-hmm. and if we can convert this model into a, a totally uh, you know new idea that is uh, where you know spending is also an investment rather than a spending real spending mm. so for example if he is 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 the spending guy he he is looking like you know he is investing into the uh, uh investing into the uh this room night or whatever you know so he stay in the resort yeah. that's all then what happens say for example if there is a gain in the investment hmm. then he would actually by spending he is actually gaining so let's see it is uh, you know so for the resort owner it is like gaining because he is getting a customer and for the ranchimal you know enabling it's uh, the entire uh, platform of trading activity and like that you know look, converting into a investable asset so as a blockchain contract so uh, this is this is uh, this is a, some new idea say for example now this can be done in various consumption so any consumption in the world say for example yeah. whether it is uh, you are buying you know anything that you buy today can you con- can you look at it as like a investment if the moment you convert that into then you have millions and billions of possibilities how to create uh, you know uh, uh, how to create investable product new product you know continuously constantly because world you know world looks at actually spending is losing game can we make it actually a gaining game mm. so this is the this is the thing that the b- b- product name we call is blockchain contract so where you know so every uh, all these uh, you know uh, the participants actually will uh, will uh, will start actually you know buying the uh, ranchimal tokens which are on the uh, flow blockchain uh, and they will uh, uh, they will start trading you know so the uh, you know so if, so what we understand is that you know bitcoin you know fundamentally so there is a uh, you know higher demand and there is a uh, lower supply so similarly yeah. so we also have uh, you know we are trying to create the set of uh, you know ecosystem where all the people come together and uh, uh, you know so on the blockchain being together actually is actually even spending can become a you know gaining thing for the entire community as a whole so whoever is participating and this is the concept that we are trying to do I love it. In fact, I was um sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. It's a very very early. Uh it's a still in the experimental mode. We are trying in multiple ways like uh, we are trying through the this art that you see here in the background. Uh Yeah, it's very so, cool. So like uh, you know, so we try to Yeah. So like this, you know, so paintings, uh, we want to create a art, art blockchain contract. What does it mean is basically see uh, uh people can actually buy uh but today say for example you know art buyers are very few mm. because not many actually understand it not many actually uh you know uh, uh, understand the importance or the or the or the get the creativity in it but rather the moment you convert as an investment then everyone will try to understand an art more they will yeah. actually you know say, the, say for example if there is on the blockchain if there are too many too many people are buyers they you no know, they may not buy the entire entire painting as a whole but they can buy a, a small stake in it as an investment say for example hmm. they could be have even 1 dollar which is sufficient to you know t- take some ownership in it and uh, right. as the as the more number of people join and there is a trading activity and the, as it gains more and more so that means the uh, you know they are all of all of them are gainers so ultimately see we are trying to convert you know everything into an investment Right. rather than looking at them as a consumption or as a uh, or, a, or as a, you know some uh, something that you don't know say for example why people invest, invest in google or facebook stock why people mm. invest only because they believe that 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 valuation of it will grow in future yeah and so we want to create that kind of atmosphere on every consumption scheme no matter what consumption it is so people consume you know many products in day to day life all of them can be converted into that kind of uh, you know investment uh a product using this uh, you know this uh, uh in the background of this ranchimal tokens on flow blockchain and this is our long term story yeah uh, you're saying something yeah this idea 
I'm like 100% in line with this. And I was thinking about it. I actually wanted to write a blog post about this. Um, and I have to refine the idea a little bit more because I want to examine, like, first of all, if this has ever happened before in history. Because, uh, first of all, a lot of people think about, especially in the U.S., they think about currency as the U.S. dollar that we have now that's just, like, inflating like crazy, right? They're printing millions and billions of dollars, trillions of dollars, really. Um, and since the 1970s, it hasn't even been based on gold. Like our dollar, you used to be able to go and get gold for your dollars. But now they're not even based on anything, really. So people think about currency very differently. They, they have a short-sighted view of how currency exists and how it works, right? And Bitcoin is sort of teaching people and blockchain is sort of teaching people how currency really works. And I think that this is something that if, you know, if we think the trajectory of Bitcoin is going to keep growing, and not, I'm not really talking about price, but really the amount of people that it affects and like the amount of people using blockchain technology, if that continues to grow, more and more people will learn that they can, like you're saying, speculate on more instruments and more things. And what I call that, and something that I want to start using, I want to sort of coin this phrase of hyper-retail speculation. And so like when you talk about like hyperinflation, it's like when the, it goes like inflation goes out of on like a crazy amount, right? And like in Zimbabwe or in Germany in the early 1900s, you know, the dollars, whatever they were using, it was worth nothing because the inflation was like at a hyperbolic rate. Uh, and so when I talk about hyper retail speculation, what I'm talking about is everyone speculating on everything. So this idea came to sort of like, I realized it was a good idea. And that's why I think that you guys are on the right track. I realized it was a good idea because I was in a chat room on IRC uh, for some uh, open source project. And I said, hey guys, like there's a problem in the app, I noticed a bug. And they were like, well, here's a, here it is in the code, like submit a pull request and fix it. And I'm like, okay, that's not a great answer. So I just re I replied, uh, yeah, maybe if there's a Bitcoin bounty, I'll do it, right? <laughs> and uh, they didn't respond to that because you know they probably don't have enough funding to fix these little bugs or whatever, right? Uh, but I actually thought about it and I was like, well, all right, I know what my hourly rate is. Even if they like, even if they offered me Bitcoin, like I don't really know how long it's going to take me to finish that project. So like, it might take me way longer unless they offer me like way way more than you know it's worth my time. I can't really even estimate how long it's going to take me to fix that bug. But if they had a token, and I could directly contribute to working on the project and making it better, and they offered me the tokens, I don't care if they're worth nothing right now. Because my, you know, promise for the future, my hope for the future is that it becomes better, you know, and I'm sort of invested in it in that way. So I was thinking to myself, wow, I really think that if we just made everything or as much as possible into these instruments that could be speculated on and give people the opportunity to invest in a project by putting their work and putting their time into it, it would be much more efficient. And in fact, I don't even think like, okay, you might lose some, you might win some, right? But in the end, it's probably going to average out. And if you do a good job, you might actually gain even more. So it's more in line with like your incentive and it's more in line with how much work you put into things. So I am 100% behind this idea. I think it's a great idea. And at the very least, it should be tried because it's a new economic model and it's, it's something that could be like revolutionary in the future. And I think other people are thinking about this too. And I, I really want to get that going on flow as soon as possible. Yeah, true. Like we, we met a guy uh, who, who was one of the developers of etherscan.io. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And he he also, yeah. So he 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 was just going outside the road and he saw Satoshi Nakamoto drive. Like okay, <laughs> like what is this place? <laughs> wow. So he so he yeah, walked in. That drive. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. He is with us, and uh, you know he will also you know future collaborator with us. So uh, you know uh, with the flow and as well as uh, you know Ranchi Mal. I was so, saying uh, he 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 has a project with some guy in Sri Lanka, and they're try they're tokenizing stones. Like high quality stones, stones, like diamonds or whatever, and then they're taking yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's wow. So yeah, he's talking to him. Yeah, I think we're gonna see it happening more and more, and I think it's a great idea. I, I really think it's awesome. I think that giving people the you know the ability to speculate and invest in things and and be part of something that it makes them try harder and it makes them do more to help affect their own growth and affect the growth of other things. I think that's really awesome. Sure. Thank you. So cool. uh, we have a great actually see I, I so uh, here you know blockchain resort so all of the uh, this place is uh, amazing actually 
you know it only one you know it's a experience uh, you know only can uh, can explain the way it is so only the visitors can mm-hmm. actually see the means for example that that edwin when he came here so he was like almost going crazy about this like wow. he couldn't believe you know that something is like this exists and second, yesterday you know someone you know someone uh, from uh, uh, lo- 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 one lo- one person who are, uh, frequently organizes this uh, blockchain meeting he came down and he couldn't believe you know so he was like moving all over and just feeling the sense of you know the blockchain uh, you know in real you know blockchain wow. in general is always virtual you know once you yeah. come here you know you feel that it, it's real it's exists it's not like you know the, uh, the people how they are talking like you know virtual assets you know have no uh, uh, you know real world uh, value and the way you know bitcoin is uh, actually you know always uh, um, uh, countered with uh, you know uh, such arguments so <laughs> here you know they see that it's real you know so when they come here you know they feel that this is the real world you know first time you know blockchain resort in the world and um, you know amazing uh, with amazing uh, you know uh, uh, total uh, you know property or uh, the a beautiful place so you know once it it always starts with you know so one pro, one experimental product that we are doing right now with the research mm-hmm. and uh, you know so slowly and slowly we are going say for example even with the interns they were for example instead of looking at one intern we are looking at as a you know as a combine of uh, set of interns we are trying to you know uh, put them on the blockchain and then to make it tradable uh, uh, again tradable instrument exactly the way you explained uh so we are trying such experiment like on startup we are trying to do uh you know uh, uh so we have the, uh, you know so something called reverse blockchain contract so like this we are trying several new blockchain contracts so all of them are in very very initial and very very experimental product but mm-hmm. you know you know if one one at least successful then we know the formula of creating you know a, a, a real physical product out of a virtual uh, you know uh, uh, domain like uh, blockchain technology and with the flow as the uh, you know a base for us for Great. all our ideas so very cool so uh, the blockchain contract the term that raja is talking about you would be proud to know that this term germinated in the minds of rohit tripathi when he met you back in the days so mm. i would like to uh, uh, ask you about experience meeting him and his contribution think about it and could ask uh, vivek to you know talk about the technical terms of blockchain or contract and also like can you tell a bit about about the bitcoin center in new york yes please like it's a, it's a physical place of course you guys... yeah. sorry you guys are breaking up i couldn't really hear the question but i'll tell you about the bitcoin center um so the bitcoin center is a place that was created by nick spanos Uh, and Nick Spanos is like big real estate giant in New York City. Uh, he's got a big personality. He's the man. Um, and he came to Bitcoin Meetup, started learning about it, uh, decided to buy a place right across from the New York Stock Exchange in Wall Street. Uh, <laughs> so he had this place. It was sort of like a, you know, F you to the guys in the, in the suits. Yeah. Uh, he had this place uh, for just about a year, maybe a year and a half. um and pretty much all bitcoin related stuff went on there they had a doge coin party where people brought their shiba inu dogs uh, and you know they had like the whole doge coin promotion there they did like auctioning off bitcoins like it was like uh, that old style stock exchange where people were like standing on the table or whatever and selling their stuff uh everything was happening there like a few startups were incubated there uh people were working nonstop on it um and i spent you know a few days i slept i slept on the floor you know working on projects and just like crashing it, it was great they used to have parties bitcoin stuff and you know people would walk in from outside that were just walking around uh new york city and they would learn about it and i thought it was a great idea and it was sort of like a home base and you know like you were saying raja it became real for us it became like okay at first it was just like i was sitting on my computer working on the blockchain software and now i can go downtown and like there are other people doing this and it's here and there are people working on their business people buying and selling it's very cool um yeah there's there are a few videos of me like i got interviewed by uh Naomi Brockwell uh i was interviewed by the guy that made the um what was it called banking on bitcoin movie which is on netflix uh and that movie is actually like half next fenos is like the main character of that movie you know they they went through the timeline of like what happened with the bitcoin center in new york for you know pretty much like half the movie it's all about that and they did a really great job awesome job of depicting what was going on 
and how like the struggle like with the re regulation and everything and that was also during the time that it was like a horrible bear market i mean from 2014 to 2015 and pretty much up until the end of 2015 we were in like a decline in bitcoin it was just going from like 600 dollars all the way down to about 300 200 dollars before it went back up again in 2016 so that was like it was really tough you know because it was like got hit with the regulations bitcoin center actually eventually got shut down um bitcoin was not going up in value people were losing you know they were losing it they were like this is not going to happen right but as we've seen you know it really has changed the way the world works people are using bitcoin they're using ripple they're using whatever to send money home there's to across you know the border whatever it is uh they're using it to buy things they're using it to make peer-to-peer -peer technology like alexandria and they're using it to sort of make this new monetary system like you guys are doing and i think that you're right i think it needs like this one thing to make it real for people to see and some people have the capability and they have the foresight and they have the it's like a, also a risk thing right it's like am i going to risk all my money on this thing that i don't even know what it is like i can't even hold it in my hand you know it's a very natural thing and it, it, it takes like a certain you know you ha either have to like blindly jump in or just follow someone else or whatever you know like it's it's sort of like a weird thing for humans to do that um so yeah it, it just it, it really helps if, if there is like a group of people and there's an established place where things happen, where you can say like, okay, this is real. People are really doing this and now we're seeing it happen. Uh, and I'm really, I'm really happy to see it grow because I think the fundamentals behind Bitcoin, I think Satoshi had the right idea. You know, you, there's no third party that's able to tell you you can't transact with someone else. And that's really fundamental because in a lot of ways, the banking system takes advantage of the people that, you know, are its customers. And Bitcoin really, really, really does a good job of using technology to solve problems for people and make things more efficient. So, yeah, you are right. Very much right. Actually, see, uh, the, uh, you know, the growth of, uh, you know, so people only look at the price of Bitcoin, but actually the reality is, uh, as you said, actually this is in the growth of applications like this with the real world assets. Once you start to, you know, play with the real world assets and uh, to make that, you know, Bitcoin as not just a virtual thing, it's actually the real concept that is going to take over the world. And I think, you know, then, then you know, so once they see that, you know, the physical objects like, uh, you know, say, for example, this is art, if, if anyone comes in, uh, you know, so they feel that it is real. It's not, uh, you know, someone uh, says, you know, like uh, uh, blockchain technology, just, you know, soft, some software out there. So, for example, today, Windows is very much part of the people's lives. You know, oh, at yeah. one point, of time, it's a purely a software. It's a, it's a virtual product. But today, you know, no one will say that it's a, you know, this thing, our smartphone, say, for example, even that is a, uh, it's a pure, uh, uh, purely a software. But, uh, you know, today, uh, a smartphone, uh, you know, is very much into people's lives. You know, no one will say it's a virtual product. No one will say. No one in the yep. world. So it's, it's about, you know, converting into, uh, you know, a blockchain products into, uh, you know, integrating into the real, real stuff uh, so that people can feel that, you know, they don't see the, actually the, the uh, virtual inside, virtual product inside. But they they feel actually the physical product, uh, uh, the uh, you know the uh, um, uh, things that you know people feel very emotional or uh, you know connected to, right. and that is the future that uh, that is the future that we are trying to build uh, with uh, you know something new concept called blockchain contract. I think uh, you know if anyone is interested to read, uh, you know so they must read uh, actually medium uh, uh, medium.com slash ranchi mall uh, 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 is the place where uh, we keep writing actually. Uh, how we are, uh, everything we are making public, all our strategies, all our ideas, there is nothing that we are keeping secret. As the experiment goes on, actually we are explaining each day how the progress of each experiment. Uh, we are going to soon actually launch one, I think, uh, you know, Abhishek is working on this uh, 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 blockchain contract page where, uh, you know, so uh, all of the updates and uh, how the trading activity will go on, uh, everything will be available uh, in just a few days. It's a matter of days. And uh, Great. Vivek, would you like to talk about what is blockchain contract and how we are using Flow blockchain? Uh, you know, what is this concept about and how we are using it? So, how we are using the common feature of the Flow okay. blockchain? So, uh, we just the common feature will tie tie the asset which is being traded mm. to okay. to the blockchain. Basically, so we blockchain contract for the real estate thing over here. We have mm -hmm. a blockchain contract called uh, Ranchi Mall Real Estate Blockchain. Cool. So people, when people when they people can pay for uh, pay for the pay for staying here in crypto. Cool. And uh, so 
the crypto gets converted to ranchi mall tokens and that is what they used to pay and a part of it goes as an investment part, oh really goes goes go as an investment into the token or or ranchi mall so it becomes the, basically an investment product so as you were saying he, then the more somebody works on the resort the value mm-hmm. of that uh value of that investment grow so now the more investors means basically you know it, it is in their interest to make this famous uh, this place famous yeah uh, you know it yeah they can share it with their friends you know they can yeah. promote promote it on facebook whatever yeah sure. so, so uh, the way we use that is uh, we decide a uh, we decide a format for the comment on the flow blockchain mm mm-hmm. so that would uh, that would decide which contract you are trying to trade so the contract itself becomes tradable cool yeah. that's great yeah. i think uh, we'll we'll post uh, the the whole detail yeah. uh, video we, we have already recorded so we it we have done a video about it and how we are doing how we are utilizing the comment feature of the flow blockchain and i think you will love it great you know and what you also, also uh, the... sorry what and you will also like the blockchain research video oh yeah that is also there the two videos you will love we are great i think yeah i'd love to watch comment. them i can share them too on the twitter you know my twitter has a, a pretty big following now uh it's not crazy but you know we have about 12000 people following our twitter that's so much more than we had i think this time last year we probably had 1200 so there are more and more people getting into this and i'd love to share the, i'd love to share this stuff with them so anytime you guys do any new updates just share it with me also i was going to say um the block explorer if you can tell me what the protocol is that you're using in the blockchain uh i can make the block explorer recognize it and maybe put a link to your website or something like that and put like your logo there on the block explorer because it'll be able to read it very easily um so that's something that i want to do for alexandria they haven't nailed down the uh the protocol yet we're still like working on it but if you guys have nailed down the protocol then i can i can really easily make it uh make that happen that'll be amazing you yeah no problem cool yeah. i wanted to ask two more things uh sure go like- ahead you get too excited that you're here so <laughs> yeah yeah uh one is uh what is your opinion on governments banning bitcoin or government banning cryptos or ico and the yeah. second one was uh, uh on the forum on the flow flow telegram group i i i kept mm-hmm. reading that uh, flow is the mo- is a fair coin because there was no pre pre mined coins before mm-hmm. and all that. can you Correct. explain that to Yes. So okay, the first thing uh, you asked about governments banning uh, and like regulation on Bitcoin. Correct? Yes. Okay. So my thoughts on that are we have already seen actually just today Switzerland said that they're not going to regulate it and they're going to be super super uh supportive of Bitcoin and blockchain technology. That means that as long as there are some countries and some places on earth that are supporting it, there's always going to be a competition. And if you look at the forex market and the foreign exchange like when people trade currencies that competition is alive and it's real today. So everything that happens in the world is like part of a geopolitical climate, right? Bitcoin is sort of something that exists everywhere. It wasn't originated in one country or another. Satoshi remained anonymous to for what, one of the reasons I think is so that it doesn't have a political or uh you know national affiliation so that everyone in the world can use it. And so Bitcoin being regulated in the US or wherever, you know, they might ban it in China for the 20th time. Um I think that as long as there are some countries using it, then it will have that value. And in fact, the more countries that use it, uh the more value it will, the more value or the more the less likely it will be that other countries ban it because they'll want to be part of that technical revo- revolution. They don't want to be left behind. If this really is the way that things go in the future, then if a country bans it, you know, it's bad for their economy. So I feel like that's something that is, you know, Bitcoin really does have a, a shot at being something that governments really can't ban. And if I think that if like every country in the world did ban Bitcoin, that's just like a really that's an awful it's an awful timeline, you know. That's like a future that I don't even want to think about because that's it's a fundamental freedom to be able to trade with people, right? And to be able to communicate So I think that that if that ever happened uh there's something even more wrong with the world than not having bitcoin right like I I think that there should be at least some countries that support it and, and allow it to, and you know let it grow 
Uh, and if there aren't, then I think that we have a bigger problem uh, for personal liberty and personal freedoms that needs to be solved before we solve the Bitcoin problem, right? So that's, that, those are my views on it. And I'm optimistic. I think that there might be some countries like China has really awful uh, capital controls. So it wouldn't be surprising if they clamp down on it a little bit. And they, they sort of seem to be going in that direction. But co countries like Switzerland that are known to be very neutral and very banking friendly, you know, they're always going to be like, whatever, just come do what you want. Same thing with like the Bahamas and all those other places. And I think that, you know, the U.S. is sort of like this world leader right now, right? And like a lot of people sort of just follow what they do. But I think that, you know, it depends. We'll see what they do. I'm not 100% sure. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. And, you know, 50, 100 years from now, if Bitcoin is really outpacing the growth of other currencies, then they might change their mind, even if they ban it now, uh, because they'll feel threatened by it. So that's something that could really change the world and really like sort of make things a little bit more even in terms of like, you know, what currencies are worth. So I think that we'll see the geopolitical system evolve. We'll see, you know, countries change the way that they think about currency and their citizens will become aware of, you know, oh, maybe the inflation is too high or maybe the bankers are taking advantage of things. And that'll be because of Bitcoin and they'll react by banning it. But that might even make the problem worse. Right. It's sort of like the Streisand effect, if you've heard of that, like when people ban things on the Internet, uh, then everyone hears that it got banned and they're like, what's that? And then they learn about it and they're like, wait a minute, <laughs> we actually want that, you know, so it's, it's hard to stop an idea. So let's say the idea is really good. Let's say the idea of Bitcoin and blockchain does take off at 20 years from now, it becomes like the thing to use for trade. Uh, it's going to be really hard for countries to ban that unless they have like a real iron grip. And that's like I said, it's a bigger problem. So because of that, because of that fundamental, the way logically the way that that works out, I think that it's it's good. I think it's op I'm optimistic because of that reason. Um, what was the second question? I forgot. Um, on the on the Telegram group, like uh, you had mentioned, Flow is the fair fair coin. Like you, you oh guys, yeah, they can do a pre pre mine and then correct. Yeah, like okay. So that's uh, nowadays when people do an ICO, uh, they sort of take all the coins and they create them out of nowhere. And this is something that made people uncomfortable. Back in the day, you know, back in 2012, 2013, if you created a coin and gave yourself all the coins, people didn't trust you. They said, like, this is a scam. It's not going to work. So there were two different concepts. One was called a pre-mine. <clears throat> Excuse me. A pre-mine is when basically you write that the Genesis block gives you like 10 million coins or whatever. So that you just get those coins up front. An Instamine is something like Dogecoin or any other coin like Quark. I don't know if you've heard of Quark. It's one of the older ones. Um, but in the beginning, you know, you get like 500,000 coins per block. And then after two weeks, it goes down to like 250,000. And then after two weeks, it goes less and less. And, you know, after a few months, you're getting like two or three coins because it halves every time, right? Uh, so there are some coins that are known to be Instamine coins. And that just means that, well, they weren't pre-mined, but all the people that were in on it in the first three weeks are sort of like, you know, they have all the coins and everyone else gets like 2%, you know. So there is some people play tricks with it and there are arguments one way and another, right? Some people say, well, everyone should read the code and they should be aware of what they're working with. And other people are like, well, you know, you don't have enough time. Not everyone has enough time or technical detail to look at this and say, hey, like, this is actually not cool. These guys are like, you know, pulling the wool over everyone's eyes. Um, and then also there's the fact that sometimes, you know, it is, it does make sense to do an ICO and sort of keep 90% of the coins, you know, let people trade a little bit of them, but incentivize people to, to use it. And now actually with smart contracts and, and multi-sig and time lock, which we didn't have in 2012, we didn't have any, like time lock was like an idea back then. Now we have it. Uh, you can tell, you can actually create a pre-mine, quote unquote, that has a 10 year lockup. So you can't spend those coins for 10 years. And you know, that might be acceptable to the community. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, Flow originally did not have a pre mine or uh, an ICO or an instant mine, meaning when you started mining, you were on the same playing field as everyone else. And I had like a good amount of computers mining Flow, and I was like 10% of the network hash rate. So there were a lot of people securing the network that were evenly getting, you know, rewarded for mining. And like I said, like we had two or three pools in the beginning that one had that bug or whatever. Um, but we had two or three pools. So there were a lot of people mining on it. Um, so I would say it's like a more fair distribution. And Flow is one of the coins that actually does have the fairest uh, distribution of coins per person, I think. Um, 
there's one concern with Flow, which is that the original Cripsy exchange, they went down and like they had everyone's deposits. We don't really know where that wallet is, but it hasn't moved in about three years. So we kind of think that that wallet is gone, um, but it's really hard to tell. Uh, anyway, the origination of Flow didn't have any of that pre-mine or anything. The original developer didn't keep any for himself, uh, didn't give himself any, anything unfairly. So it's sort of like very much like Bitcoin, where it started out as everyone just mines and the competition sort of naturally progresses organically. Um, so yeah, Flow, Flow is almost exactly like Bitcoin, except using the script proof of work. Uh, and it's sort of a different block schedule. Like we have our blocks every year, whereas Bitcoin is every uh, four years. So the reward gets cut in half. It's sort of like a more deflationary currency. So yeah, other than that, um, there aren't many differences. Like we have the... We have that metadata field, which is our big thing, uh, but it is essentially as secure as Bitcoin in terms of the way the blockchain works. So that's, that's just like a quick history of, of pre-mining and instant mining. It, let me actually talk a little bit about that a little bit more because I think that when Bitcoin first came out and when all coins started coming out and pre-mining things, uh, almost all the pre-mined coins were known as scams. You know, it was just like a developer trying to get coins. But I think that... In the beginning of Bitcoin, everyone that was in the ecosystem or almost everyone was very liber libertarian minded, you know, and they were like, oh, like, you know, everything should be free. Everything should be this, whatever. Um, and they didn't agree with the fact that some people would have like the majority of the coins. They thought it would be should be more evenly distributed. Uh, I personally, I think that some ICOs, it does work out that the developers get to keep 30 or 40 percent. Um, it really depends on the team and it really depends on their schedule and if they have a good budget if they have a good business plan, and they, if they especially use these new technologies and the new Bitcoin script and whatever, if they use a smart contract system, if they lock it up in a vesting period of four to five years, maybe 10 years, I think that that makes them more trustworthy. And you know what? If they want to hold on to their coins for 20 years, they can do that and they can show the community that. It might even work better. Uh, so yeah, I think that you know, now that we're reaching a more diverse group of people with different ideas about how the economy should work, not every coin has to be exactly that way. But just for a little bit of history on why Flow chose to be not pre-mined, because at the time in the community, that was the most fair way to launch a coin. So that's what we did. Or that's what Sky Angel did, and I agreed with it. So <laughs> that's what we did. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Talking yeah. about the cryptocurrencies, uh, most yeah. of the cryptocurrencies focus on you know overnight price jumps, right? Five hundred dollar, yeah. one thousand dollars. But Florine Coin, I guess, uh, Flow, I guess, uh, concentrates more on creating value rather than, you know, making money overnight. So what is your ethics behind that? And after, where do you want to see five years after the flow community? Where do you want to, you know, make your commitment and what's your plan uh, like five years down the road? That's a great question. And as you know, I've been doing this already for five years. Uh, so I, <laughs> if you asked me that question five years ago, I never thought we would be in this place, right? I thought that Bitcoin would never hit $5,000. So that was absurd, right? And it almost hit 20,000. But I don't want to just talk about price because my friend actually asked me a sort of a similar question the other day, but he phrased it this way. I was telling him about some of my goals for flow. And he asked me, you know, what's your mission? Because you can have a goal and that goal can get reached. And then what do you do? You know, you can have a number of goals, but what really is your mission? Have you thought about what that is? Uh, and I hadn't, I hadn't really thought about it that way. So I thought to myself, well, what I really want to see is people developing on a blockchain. And I want to use this flow blockchain that I have that I'm so fortunate for it to be so successful and be part of the marketplace and have people working on it right now. And I just want it to be even better. So I want to give developers tools. That's why we're creating this SDK. I want to keep everything up to date and give them all the newest technology that Bitcoin is using. And actually, just today, the CTO of Blockstream, Greg Maxwell, he's one of the Bitcoin core developers, one of the best C++ programmers, like legit cryptographer. He's awesome. He came out with a presentation. They're adding like, they want to add like four or five different features to Bitcoin to enhance privacy, to make the blockchain smaller and to make like block synchronization faster and to make the network better and more secure. And I mean, this is stuff that's really cool. It's like breaking, you know, edge, it's bleeding edge technology. Um, so what I really want to do with Flow and what my mission is for the next five years is to like really grow the community of developers organically. And we've done that. Like the Telegram channel is really great. You know, 
and getting people involved and getting people to work on it is something that I've always wanted to do. Um, just back in my own life, like when I was probably 13 or 14 years old, I was part of a developer community that made an online game. You know, this was like in the late 90s. And it was just like me and a bunch of friends, like th the game had its own coding language that you could develop in. And it like let you upload uh, different, uh, you know, like animations and, and file and then like different graphics and you can make your own world. So like that community is very much like what I'm modeling this on. It, it was just like a silly game that we all played. But the community of developers and people that would work together to do that, you know, even as kids, we were able to make an, an online RPG. And it was really cool because we, we were given the tools to do it. Uh, and I, I worked on that for like three years. We made a server, you know, it had like 100 people online at all times, which was a lot for back then, wow. you know, 1990s, you know, it was 1999, I think. Um, everyone was on 56K. But I just look at it the same way, right? Like what made that successful, you know? that was successful because they gave us the opportunity to build. And what I want to do with flow is give people the opportunity to build and we'll see people building on it, you know, and that's exactly the same thing. So that's, yeah, that's kind of my idea. Um, and I want to, I want to keep us in this proof of work mindset too, because I think proof of work is really important. I think that people are straying away from it. Uh, I think that Satoshi had the right idea. I think that to make us chain really secure, you have to have like a, a hard economic cost, to making it, uh, blocks, you know, valuable and making them hard to break. And that's, you know, I, I think that that's something that I'm going to stand behind for flow. So yeah, I, I think that in the short term, we really want to see some tooling, some SDKs, uh, some more things like that to make it easy for programmers to use. I just saw today in the telegram, someone uploaded a doc, a Docker instance. So you can like just one click install flow on your Ubuntu instance, uh, stuff like that is exactly what we want to see. And then within five years, we'll see this rich ecosystem of apps developing on Flow. And really, right now, we are the only Satoshi blockchain that has apps on it. Everything else is either Ether-based or Waves or some other platform. And I think that that Satoshi blockchain is really important because of that proof-of-work security and because of the robustness of the scripting system. So that's what we're working on, and that's, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing for the next five years. So uh, now let's talk about you. I mean, sure. you are the... Uh, owner, founder of the Flow blockchain, co-founder of Alexandria.io, one of mm -hmm. the most influential person in the blockchain industry. Yet, you find time as a developer, if I post an issue in a, in a maybe in <laughs> Telegram, and you, nine out of 10 times, you would be the first person to respond. How do you find that time? How do you manage to, you know, love, I guess you love every single person of the community. <laughs> Well, yeah. like I said, I've been, I've been growing this really on my own. You know, I have a few people that are working with me to market now, but for the last five years, I've really just talked about it to people. Uh, and I've told them to join Telegram and they tell their friends. Uh, so everyone that is in the community came there through me somehow, uh, one way or another. So I feel responsible and I feel a connection to those people because they're probably one or two hops away from someone that I know in person or, or, or really, you know, know really well. So I always value those people and they've taken their time. You know, it, it, it is a practical thing in the end. They've taken their time to be interested in my project. So why would I not help them out? Uh, I think that, that that's really important. Um, and if it ever comes to the point where flow is like super successful and I literally don't have time, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll find the best people to continue doing the same thing and make sure that they do a good job because that's something that's really important to me is that everyone that comes into the channel learns how to use Flow. Uh, and, you know, even, even when I'm at work or I'm doing other stuff, and, you know, this is like a project that I've been working on for so long, I'm really interested in, in, in helping people out and helping people, people learn about it. So I'm never going to, like, do another job where, like, I can't respond to people on Telegram. You know what I mean? Like, that would just not be an option for me. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's something that I, I'm, really, I'm really committed to. Uh, I and, really yeah. appreciate that because... Of course. Like, yeah, like, uh, I couldn't think of... Like, I, I was initially shocked, like, oh, Joe is replying. So, yeah. by the way, you see, for the... Uh, just tell us, like, you know, we, you know, we will have, you know, continue to have stream of people who are Ra, who has less experience with blockchain, but mm -hmm. who wants to learn blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, who has uh, like uh, basically first timers in their entire life to uh, you know understand uh, what is this technology or uh, 
um are they have zero idea about obviously about the flow but uh, you know we are actually insisting them you know so they are all actually potential uh, you know so you know uh, uh, potential uh, you know great programmers uh, into the blockchain industry uh, you know uh, some of them will perhaps you know create their own products and services you know around the flow or other blockchain obviously mm-hmm. but we are actually you know bringing them into the uh, this community and uh, so we have actually you see roughly more than you know at least some kind of initiation made from them at least you know look at what is flow like this at least in the numbers if you just say numbers 500 people you know wow. 500 is a developer community is a very big community wow and all of them are programmers software programmers all of them all of them are c++ programmers that's awesome so what i am saying is basically but the they need a constant kind of mentoring we are trying to figure out we are trying to still doing experimentation how to actually utilize them to create real blockchain products you know mm. on the flow blockchain uh, 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 specifically at the moment uh, and uh, so but they need some kind of you know uh, constant uh, tech support uh, because right now uh, they, they they have no idea about even uh you know uh, generally you know so how this blockchain is going to revolutionize things so we are actually trying to you know promote from our side i think uh, from flow side uh, we need some kind of uh, active some people who are already volunteering with you and i think uh, if they focus on our uh, specifically this rap set of people because they have uh, you know generally not understanding things mm. uh, all they need is some kind of initial hand holding i think the forums which you have uh... introduce in the new website there are also a yes. good place to uh, good place to start exploring yeah so we, what i've tried to do is i've made that thread where you know it has all the common problems and every time someone has a new problem i try to post the solution there um and i think that's a really good jumping off point especially because like as this as people uh start using the product more as people use flow more uh they're going to be running into different problems uh and i think that there's going to be a point where we have most of the general stuff listed there so we can just point to that and say hey you know you can solve this problem by following the steps that we've lined out on the forums or if that doesn't work if the steps don't work and the solution isn't correct we'll find a new solution to the problem so that's yeah the forums are definitely a great resource for that but also uh people people that are um experience like and have sorry what the individuals actually when they are just coming into the industry uh i mean the first time when they are getting exposed to a new concept totally you see they are building their career you see they will be very very emotionally connected mm. uh so they need a kind of personal touch so i know the post forums are there i know the telegram group is there yeah but uh, but you know at times you know so when you are doing first time uh you know because you know because you are very careful you know what is going to happen they are very protective about their career so if we can give some kind of personal touch uh, we are already giving as from the franchi ma i think uh, from the flow yeah. also something can be done uh, perhaps we can discuss on the uh, telegram more on this in this definitely time. yeah definitely uh and you know we have a group of developers that work on it full time it's myself bitspill ray and uh osler dev uh she's on there too So you know but between the four of us one of us usually will be able to answer the question. Uh and you know the forum isn't just like hey go to the forum we're not just going to paste the link you know what I mean. A lot of the times I just look up the answer on the forum because I forgot what the answer is. You know a lot of the stuff is like a weird compiling error, you know. So yeah, I'll look yeah. up the I, answer and and just paste it. So great. yeah. It makes it easier for us too to to help. I guess we have taken a lot of your time. <laughs> oh no, I it's okay. uh i promise this is the last question uh your okay. comments on the partner companies like rachi mall ccpi and the way they are you know contributing to the flow blockchain your comments on that i think they're great i think that everyone should be contributing as much as they possibly can uh and it, you know push the system to its limits uh a lot of the the people that have chosen to use flow uh it's because it has some of the best uh statistics and some of the best um sort of internal blockchain um i guess properties you could say like it has the most throughput with 40 second blocks you can really put a lot of transactions per minute on there um but i want to see like how far that could be taken you know and like 
how many apps can we really run on the chain at the same time at full capacity? Because we, unlike people that build stuff on Ethereum or build stuff on Waves, we have the chance to like choose our own scaling solutions and make sure that everyone can get like what they need out of it. And that's really when people asked me three years ago, why don't you put, you know, these apps on Bitcoin? Why don't you just, why did you make a new chain for this? And now I, I used to say to them, I used to say, um, you know, Bitcoin doesn't support apps. You know, imagine if the block is full on Bitcoin. You think that, you know, they're going to expand the block or like reduce the fees for like a gambling site? You're crazy. You know, Bitcoin is digital cash. It's digital gold. You know, that's the purpose of it. Philosophically, it makes a difference. And when you make a piece of software with a philosophy and you don't stick to it, it things get messed up. That's why Bitcoin is stuck to their philosophy. And that's why blocks, you know, nowadays the fees are like 2 or $3. You know, back over the winter, you know, the, the fees were up to like $50 sometimes. Imagine paying $50 for a fee for like a, you know, a small little message. It's crazy. So sure. I was right. <laughs> uh, I like being right. But it's not because I'm smarter than them. It's because I really started this chain with that separation, right? And that's, that's just like, that was the only difference. And it's not, it doesn't take a genius or it doesn't take a super great programmer to understand that the right tool is for the right job. You know, you can't use the wrong tool for a job. That It's just everything's going to be messed up. So really what I want people to do and why I encourage people to use Flow is because we have that control. If, if you build an app on Ethereum that Ethereum, the Ethereum network doesn't, is not compatible with in some way, uh, it's going to be hard for them to sort of fork away and, and change it for you. Um, that's why I think right now, you know, flow is just something we're mills, we're, we're meant for building apps and we're always going to be meant for building apps. So whatever you guys need, uh, bring it up to us and the community will decide how to best handle that. And that's the philosophy that we have, you know, this coin supports apps. That's what it is. Um, so yeah, I, I love, I love all the projects and I think they're great and I really want everyone to push the limits of it because then we'll really see how we can work together to solve these problems. And we have that opportunity. It's amazing, Joe. It's incredible. It's incredible. I know that cool. you are already you know, a great, great supporter to the community. Uh, uh, we have experienced in person, each of us, uh, from the Ranchi Mall and 366 Pi. And uh, I think, you know, so, you know, flow, you know, so is a very uh, a slow rise. But I think, you know, once there are more and more applications, you know, flow will uh, hit the roof. I, you know, I still remember, you know, Rohit, uh, Rohit you know, used to always say that, you know, uh, Flow, flow, you know, is something that, you know, we want to definitely make sure that flow is also going to rise along with the Ranchi Mall. So we oh, have that great. kind of, uh, you know, so he said to every investor, he convinced every investor that we will fund, um, uh, you know, try to promote flow in every possible way. And that, you know, it is reflected already in the interns, like say, anyone who is trying to reach us is first they have to see is first they have to do is go to the flow, <laughs> download and install. Uh, you know, learn the code. Uh, these are That's the two great. queries. So, <laughs> and uh, hold. <laughs> go with the flow. Yeah, go, yeah, go with the go flow. With the flow yeah. <laughs> I love flow. that. Go with the flow. Rohit is awesome. And Tell you know, you must, we, we want you to come here once, you know, so I don't know how soon you oh, are sure. going to make yeah. it. And uh, how I mean, long do you have it? How long is the resort there for? Do you, do you own it now? Is this just forever? We have six months. At least. Six months. Oh, wow. Hmm. That's pretty long. Let me, let me ask my girlfriend. Baby, when do you want to go on vacation? Yes, yes. <laughs> when is it available? Six, we have six months. Mm, let's go for our birthday. Okay, we're coming for our birthday. <laughs> right, no, we... <laughs> awesome. It will be incredible. I, I can promise you that, you know, you both will have an unforgettable experience here. Awesome. There's no doubt about it. It's That's a, so cool. It's a, so much uniqueness here. Great. Thank you so much. It's a very That's romantic really place as well. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> I must add that. Perfect. Uh, you know, she would just love it. Uh, you, when, you see, when she sees the photograph, it only tells only one small part, that greenish part. But in general, this place, every single part is, uh, you know, art. And uh, very, very, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I see every day, you know, couples. Every single day, I see only couples. Cool. Uh, so I guess... <laughs> that sounds uh, great. Uh, I would like to end this uh, interview with... One point is, I have to tell this point that I asked Joe, I just simply asked Joe on Telegram that I want to have an interview with you. And Joe gave me 
date and give me a time so <laughs> we from the rashi mall we on behalf of rashi mall we are honored that you you know you gave us some time and of course. we would like to, we would like love we would love to you know reconnect time and time and every time sure yeah of course Please. let me know when you're thinking about doing anything uh and you know if you need help making a video of how to go through the software or anything like that if you want me to take a look at some of the stuff you guys are working on i'd be more than happy to provide feedback and i'm more than happy to you know do an interview or any time that you want this is really fun it's really <laughs> amazing yep amazing great great cool. uh, joe so uh, you know uh, uh, wishes for best wishes you know for the flow community uh, from the ranchi mall and the thank you thank you yeah. very much great thank you very much for See you too much yeah. You Thank you guys Sometimes. too. Go Talk with you later. the flow. Yeah, go <laughs> with the flow. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye bye.